When it comes to wireless signals and the bars that your device displays for signal strength, what it comes down to is not those bars, but something else. We're going to teach you what it is. Now, I'm Chris with the Mobile Internet Resource Center, and I'm here to talk to you about bars. Now, people get a little bit obsessed about bars, not the kinds you drink in, but the kinds that you see on your phones and your hotspots, and, oh my gosh, I got five bars, or, oh no, I've only got one. And they get really, really obsessed over this. But, well, just what is a bar? It's just a calculation that your phone is making, your device is making, to try and sum up the condition of the signal that it is getting in. Um, every device actually calculates it slightly differently, so you cannot compare the bars you're seeing on an Android with an iPhone from two different manufacturers. They're calculating them differently, but it is just kind of a handy, quick reference of, well, you know, five bars is probably a better signal than three. It's probably a better signal than one. But this actually, um, behind the scenes, it's got a whole bunch of data that's going into it. Is, is it calculating based on the tower load? Is it calculating based on the raw signal strength in de uh, decibels? Um, is the signal to, re signal to noise ratio? It's all going into that bars calculation. But it really doesn't matter because, well, what really matters to you is the speed. And you could have a very, very fast one bar signal or a slow five bar signal. So pay attention to speed, not bars. And I'm Cherie with the Mobile Internet Resource Center. If bars are kind of meaningless in predicting what your data performance is actually going to be, what does actually impact your data? First of all, the frequency band that you're connecting to. Each carrier, cellular carrier, broadcasts their signal over different frequency bands, and they all have different benefits. Some are better at longer range, some are better at shorter range, and they carry different capacities. That can also impact how many other people are on your local tower using that capacity? That can impact your speed. Also, your device, the modem inside of your cell phone or your mobile hotspot or router, it can also impact how it can take that signal and what it can do with it for speed performance. And we have a whole other video going over that that I recommend looking at to follow up with. Also, your distance to the wireless hotspot. So whether it's a cell tower or a Wi-Fi hotspot, that distance, wireless signal can only travel so far and it gets weaker the further you are from it. Um, there's local conditions, weather, obstacles like buildings or the construction of your RV or boat can also block signal. Your data plan can also impact your signal. Some plans are always throttled. You might have conditions like network management or like for video you might actually see slower speeds because your carrier throttles the video resolution that you might get so all of these factors can impact the actual speeds you see and hardly any of that is reflected in the bars so if bars don't matter and you're looking to improve and optimize your signal what should you be looking at and that is using a tool called a speed test now a speed test you run it on your phone or any other device um, and it will give you a s speed of the connection. It'll help you actually see the performance you're getting completely aside from the bars. Now, before you're gonna do a speed test, the, the way to do it properly is to take a baseline first. So connect the way you would normally, whether through your phone or your hotspot or whatever, and do a series of speed tests to see, well, what's the performance and what is it, what, what are you starting with? And then repeat this with whatever signal enhancing changes you want, whether you're going to put a booster into the mix, hook up an antenna, maybe put your device hanging in a soap dish in the window, whatever you're doing to try and improve the signal, then run the same speed tests over again, and you'll see what sort of impact that's making. And you might actually notice that you, you know, the bars went up, but your speeds went down. That's actually a pretty common occurrence sometimes with cell boosters. Um, so how should you take the speed test? We, there's a lot of different apps out there that do that. Um, we are very big fans of the speedtest.net app and the um, website by Ookla. Um, there's also the speedof.me website, which is really handy and just runs directly in a web browser. Um, and those will both give you some good results and you can um, try them both and see which ones you like. And then also the fast.com um, website by Netflix will let you test video speeds, which is very important because a lot of plans might be full speed ahead for regular data, but have certain speed throttles for video. So you can see, is your video speed being capped by using fast.com? Now, when you run a speed test, whatever service you're using, they're going to give you some results. And what do those results mean? 
first ones you're going to see is probably your download speed and that is the one that most people consider the most important this is the speed that you're getting from the source of your internet so cellular or wi-fi or satellite that is the speed that you're getting from that source to your device and this is important for things that you download like if you're streaming a video you're downloading a large file or just surfing the internet this is the how fast pictures and text can download to your device now what speed should you be looking for we'd like to see at least five megabit per second for most normal speeds this is going to give you snappy web pages loading you're going to be able to stream most hd video at at least 720p maybe even 1080p on some video streaming services and it's just going to feel an all-around good service but if you're getting lower than that that's probably fine as long as you don't feel it too bad if you're getting under one megabit per second the internet's going to feel really slow it's still going to be usable but it's going to feel very slow by today's standards if you can get above 20 megabit per second well that's enough speed to stream 4k video assuming you have a data plan that allows it most don't but you can do a lot of stuff you can download large files at those speeds very quickly but if you can get at least 5 megabit per second by today's standards you're doing pretty darn good now the other performance one that you can see is upload speeds this is the how fast it is going from your device back to the source so up to the cell tower or back to a Wi-Fi network these speeds typically are usually going to be slower than download speeds but in today's cellular world we're starting to see upload speeds and download speeds pretty well matched in a lot of conditions there's usually more upload capacity than there is download capacity because more people are streaming video than they are uploading large files but that's becoming not as true there's a lot of people out there streaming YouTube live they're like broadcasting or doing two-way video conferencing and that's where that upload capacity matters the most we typically like to get between one and five megabit per second up to get a smooth experience with broadcasting video if we get above that we're super happy but for most internet browsing you're getting over oh maybe a half a megabit per second or higher your web pages and your request to the internet are going to be just fine and you're not going to be feeling uh, upload capacity ping time is another reading that you'll see and that is the amount of time it takes from a request to go from your device to its source like a web server and then back to you if you're getting under a hundred uh, milliseconds you're probably okay under 50 is great over 500 pretty darn slow um, so those are just some basic benchmarks um, there's a heck of a lot more data that you can dive into but that'll give you the basics to get started so hopefully you now understand that bars kind of meaningless don't pay attention to the bars they're a good quick reference but all things being equal more bars is better but speed is what really matters so you'll have to do a little bit of testing at each location you go to to optimize what your signal is now we have a bunch of other guides that go along with this video uh, if you go to mobileinternetinfo.com slash testing you will get a ton more information on links to speed test apps that we like the results the readings how to optimize your signal the things that you can do to improve your signal we go into a lot of that sort of detail but hopefully what we hope you took away from this video is don't focus on the bars don't be obsessed <laughs> we'll see you next time and thank you to our members for making this all possible these videos are brought to you by our premium members our mobile internet aficionados they make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos if you like this video please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.